Hello and welcome everybody. This is the MATLAB and Simulink Racing Lounge. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the basics of code generation. And for that episode, I'm really glad to have Andreas on board. Hi, Andreas. Hi, Christoph. How are you? I'm fine. What about you? All Thanks. good? Yeah. Great. So, Andreas, could you introduce yourself briefly? Sure. So, my name is Andreas Uschold. I'm with Application Engineering in Germany in our Munich office. Mm -hmm. And my daily job is to go to customers and help them from a technical point of view mm -hmm. to understand how our solutions work up to code generation. Okay, definitely makes sense. Thanks for joining again. And what are we going to talk about today? Well, we will try to answer the question, why code generation? We will provide you with a workflow that is also used in industry. And at the end, we have a software slash hardware suggestion that you could use for your control algorithms and your microcontrollers. Well, that means directly going into the topic. Andreas, why should teams use code generation? Well, many of you are already doing your design, your algorithm development in MATLAB, mm -hmm. Simulink, and all the other tools that we are offering. So what we can see with many of our customers is that they are doing exactly the same, develop the algorithm in MATLAB and Simulink, but after that, they go to the desk and rewrite everything in C by hand. So instead of doing that, we're having a workflow that includes automatic code generation, which helps you to increase the speed of development process by using automatic code generation for deploying that controllers, those algorithms, and by that being much faster in development and of course introduce much less errors than with handwritten code. Okay, as far as I can see, while well, you have all in the tool chain, you save a lot of time and you do less errors and the typical use case for you could be let's think about for example you're doing an anti-slip controller you have developed it in simulink and you stay within the mathworks tool chain in order to generate code and put that code onto your board is it about right that's about cool. it. cool so now let's jump to the workflow so what is happening um and this means again handing, handing it over to andreas okay so for this we're bringing you a typical design workflow as it is used within many industries, mm -hmm. especially the automotive industry. And this one is called the Design V or mm -hmm. V cycle. Okay. Okay, so this is already prepared mm -hmm. over here in the whiteboard. So this design workflow goes from top down and on the right again. So first of all, what you typically do when you think about what you want to develop is, well, what do I want to do? So what is it what that I want to achieve? Mm -hmm. which is the requirement, exactly, yeah. documentation. You mm -hmm. write down what you really want to do, the requirements. Mm -hmm. So, after you thought about what you want to do, it's time to design your system. Yep. And after designing your system, you go down into the specific components. So you narrow down your problems by developing mm -hmm. controllers, algorithms, everything that your system overall needs. Mm -hmm. So now it's time for system design and component design. Okay. Well, we have talked about that um, the two-step process, system design and component design. And this is basically coming from automotive industry. They have very complex system. So imagine a system like a stability controller and that whole system of stability controller can be a sub or can be grouped into many sub components. For a stability program, you, you have slip control. You need something like a adaption of brake forces. So that's basically a main system and a subsystem. Depending on the complexity, this can be condensed down to one system, but that definitely depends on your level of complexity. Okay, so now that you have designed your system or your components in MATLAB Simulink, mm -hmm. now it's time to generate code out of it. Okay. C or C++ code. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So w when we have that C code in place, what do automotive customers usually do? Okay, so now it's time for the right side of the design we, which means verification, validation, and testing. Okay. Is what you have implemented here exactly what you wanted to do? Mm -hmm. Now it's about subsystem testing, system test, and at the end, the user acceptance test. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So when we talk about user acceptance test, we are definitely talking about teams testing on track. Exactly. All the algorithms are running on the car and you're driving laps. Perfect. Um, before entering that test metrics a bit more, um, I'd like to further understand, well, we have generated C code and how can I bring that onto my system? This is something, well, 
there's definitely a workflow, but can you give us some more insight to that? So this is how a typical control circuit looks like in MATLAB Simulink. It consists mm -hmm. out of the control algorithm mm -hmm. and the plant that it is controlling. Mm -hmm. Could be your car, could be a motor, could be anything. Yep. Okay, so now we want to generate the code out of the controller. Mm -hmm. Could be C or C++ code. Yep. Perfect. So at that point, I asked myself the question, I have C and C++ code out of the controller, makes perfect sense, but is it running on a microcontroller? Is it that easy? Okay, first of all, of course, the code is not yet running on a mm -hmm. microcontroller. Actually, there are two steps that you can do. Mm -hmm. First of all, you can put it on a microcontroller manually mm -hmm. by packing it into something that's called a wrapper. Okay. Many teams have those wrappers already. Those mm -hmm. wrappers can be used for communicating with hardware, with CAN interfaces, mm -hmm. with actuators and sensors. Okay. But instead of doing that manual process, you can also use something that we call hardware support packages. Mm -hmm. Well, let's do this wrapper first and then we will provide you with a workflow that we suggest. Basically, the wrapper, just to, to wrap it up at that point, um, is providing the infrastructure and all the connections, um, hardware, software connections to your actual system. And this is the point where we are coming to the workflow that we suggest. Basically, when we start for the controller, you design and tune it in Simulink, mm -hmm. and then we talk about the code generation process. What we suggest to do is use supported microcontrollers, and this is exactly what you have mentioned, Andreas, hardware support packages that are available from MathWorks side for microcontrollers like BeagleBone Black, STM Microelectronics, for example, the STM32 F4 Discovery Board, and also for a bunch of Texas Instruments boards. We have been mentioning these boards as we know that they are quite popular in Formula Student. Mm -hmm. For sure, there are other supported microcontrollers. Just check on our website. And well, even if it's a third party solution, and there are a lot of third party solutions around which have a Simulink interface, which has basically the same workflow. And as you've said, we are talking to hardware. It's definitely beneficial if you um, use also supported CAN hardware, for example. Mm -hmm. That means you can talk to your hardware, software, sensors in your vehicle a lot easier. And basically, my understanding now is we have that code generated and to put it on the microcontroller, this is done automatically. Yes. I can. don't see that at all. Mm -hmm. And at the end, my controller is working on the car. Yes. So this can be done using our tools, exactly. Okay. And I think now it's um, time to go back one step and, and think about testing. What are the testing options that you think Formula Student teams should, should go for? So, there are many different ways of testing. Mm -hmm. So first of all, there's something very important that many teams are already doing before actually going into the developing of C or C++ code. You can do something that's called rapid control prototyping, which simply means running your code on a real-time environment mm -hmm. and go out with it, go out on the racetrack. For this, you can use something that's called Simulink Real-Time. And Simulink Real-Time can be used together with hardware. And for mm -hmm. that hardware, we're having a hardware partner, which mm -hmm. is called Speedgoat, a company that is located in Switzerland. Okay, perfect. So basically what teams can do is um, they simulate in a real-time environment. That's why the tool is called Simulink Real-Time. Because what we know, Windows or your computers are not running on real-time operating mm -hmm. systems. And in order to make sure that it runs real-time, mm -hmm. you can use Simulink Real-Time plus hardware. That means speed code. And you can be sure that I put all the relevant links to that information into the video description of that mm -hmm. episode. So what about the right side of the mm -hmm. design V? So there are actually multiple things that you can do. First of all, you can develop your algorithm, you can deploy it in C and C++. Mm -hmm. So what you want to know next is how your code behaves directly on the microcontroller mm -hmm. where you want to deploy it. So instead of just trying it and going to the racetrack, there's something that's called processor in the loop. Mm -hmm. So you use your process, you attach it to your computer, plug it in, and mm -hmm. instead of running your algorithm in a MATLAB simulating environment on mm -hmm. your computer, you run it directly on a microcontroller. Okay. And this is called process in the loop, okay. PIL. Perfect. While Andreas is, is writing process in the loop down, well, we can just give a simple comparison here or a simple example. We make sure that the controller is running on the board. 
and all the rest, the plant and the control algorithm mm -hmm. as such, is running on our computers, on our notebooks. This makes sure that the control algorithm we have developed is running nicely on our desired board. Okay, okay, perfect, makes sense. So, after that, there's another step mm -hmm. many teams are already doing. It's an optional step. Okay. This one is called hardware in the loop. Okay. So what does hardware in the loop mean? So we already have deployed the control algorithm on the microcontroller. Mm -hmm. So now you want to understand again how that one behaves again in a real-time environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So instead of going out on a racetrack, mm -hmm. it may be that the car is not yet available, the motor, the engine is not yet available. Mm -hmm. So for that cases, you want to simulate it. Okay. And therefore, you put a plant on the real-time machine okay. by simulating it directly. For example, with Simulink real-time. Okay. And this one is called hardware in the loop. Okay, just a question at that point. So first, let us write hardware in the loop. Perfect. Um, can I, you said Simulink real-time, can I also use that speed code hardware that I'm using for rapid control prototyping also for hardware in the loop? Yes, you okay. can use the speed code hardware for both. Okay. Hardware in the loop and rapid control okay. prototyping. So as a recap, I'm using hardware in the loop. Well, it's optional, but in case my car is not yet ready or in case I don't have access to the old, to the last year's car, this is a definitely an option to make sure that all my algorithms are nicely running. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think the, the top right corner is, is, is definitely clear to us. This is you put your control algorithms onto your vehicle and do race racing, you do testing. Well, we have seen some teams and we already have an episode of that um, together with TU Delft. They have a really nice and lean workflow. They are able to well adapt their controllers, auto-generate code, deploy it onto their system within five minutes. That means mm -hmm. they do test rounds, they adapt certain things and after five minutes the driver is able to get back on track again. And this is basically what we are talking about. You should have an efficient process for testing. We also have a racing launch episode for processor in the loop um, where we have deployed a controller directly onto a board. So I think these two episodes are definitely linked to that one. So before moving to the key takeaways of today's episode, let me guide you through the MathWorks tools involved in the workflow and the design view that Andreas has just explained. Starting from the top left corner with the requirements, there you are completely free. It's your project. Write the requirements down on paper, start with illustrations or flowcharts. When moving over to system design and component design, you will dive into the world of MathWorks products. So you will probably use MATLAB and Simulink and maybe also Stateflow for logic-driven systems. And as we have seen in the last two episodes of the MATLAB Simulink Racing Lounge, Simscape is a very powerful language to set up plant models really using physical systems. For the code generation involved, you will use the Simulink coder and in case you are doing rapid control prototyping, RCP, you will use Simulink real-time. When considering the C, C++ code generated, you will see that the embedded code is involved. This is the core tool generating very readable and structured code that even fulfills ANSI ISO standards. When you are moving on on the validation branch of the design V and when you are testing your subsystems processor in the loop, we will need again the embedded coder as it creates the code and deploys it onto the microcontroller. And when you are moving on another step and doing hardware in the loop testing means system testing, you will need a plant model either created in Simulink or Simscape and you will need again Simulink real-time in conjunction with a powerful hardware such as Speedcode to run your model on that. Well, for the user acceptance test, recall that it's your race car. You have developed the hardware and you may use whatever fits your needs. And my last statement on that slide is all the tools that I've mentioned here are part of our Formula Student software offer. So there's no need for you to worry and purchase individual tools. You are good to go, all is set. And now it is time to move to the key takeaways, again together with Andreas. So, what are the key takeaways here? First of all, you have a design process that allows you to reduce costs, mm -hmm. and time mm -hmm. and money. Yep. It speeds up development process, it helps you to reduce errors by finding those errors, those yep. bugs, as early as possible. And you have one tool chain that allows you to go through the whole development process within MATLAB and Simulink environment. Perfect. So thank you very much, Andreas. It was very helpful. I could learn a lot from that episode. Thank you very much for joining. And now we are definitely close to the end of the episode. You might have recognized that we have squeezed a lot of topics into that episode. We have talked about rapid control prototyping, 
different test methodologies, code generation. And while we are ready to do further episodes, we are ready to go further into detail and therefore we are relying on your feedback. So let us know how you develop your control algorithms and how you do the code generation process. Let us know via our team email address or via our Facebook group. Um, if you want to have a look at further episodes and all episodes of the Racing Lounge, we suggest you go to mathworks.com slash racing lounge, which is our overview page. And then let me again point you to our software offer, which is living at mathworks.com slash academia slash student competition. There you have access to all the tools that we are mentioning here, including Simulink Realtime, including the code generation products. Um, and at the end, if you're using our software, we would be really happy if you use our logo on your car and your reports. Andreas, thanks again for joining that episode. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.